Hello, everyone, and welcome to Our Things to Do When You're Bored, Part 3. In today's video, I've got a lot of fun and exciting crafts and art projects that you can do when you're bored to cure your boredom. Before I begin, like and subscribe, and let's see what we can do for today's video. The first project of the day is to create an optical illusion. So I've done this once before on my channel and created this wavy zigzag pattern. And this is super easy and fun to do. All you need is a canvas and five paint colors. You need red, yellow, dark blue, blue, and black to make this. And now it's time to unbox the canvas. We will also need a ruler and a pencil for this project as well. So make sure to have those on hand too. I'm creating one and a half by one and a half inch boxes for this. And then I'm turning those boxes into wavy designs by just creating little hills on either side of the boxes to make it look like a wavy pattern instead of just straight squares. This will just help our pattern later and make it even cooler. It should look something like this. And I'm going ahead and grabbing a marker and just kind of outlining all of the waves that I just created and then outlining the lines that intersect with those waves. I just want to make sure I have it all straight in my head. I tried to erase the pencil underneath but it kind of smeared the marker around. So do this at your own risk if you're going to do it and don't worry, it doesn't need to be perfect. For this design, we are doing a checker pattern. So I'm just putting little X's all over the boxes that need to be black. I wanna make sure that I have it all mapped out and do it right before I mess it up. And it doesn't look like a checker pattern anymore. So this was really fun. And once you have all of the checkers in, it should look something like this. So now it's time to bring in our colors. So the yellow and red will be a pair and the dark blue and the light blue will also be a pair. So we're going to put red and yellow on the right side of everything and the blues on the left side of everything. So don't worry, I'm gonna break it down for you. But for now, we're starting off with red and just putting it on the right side of every single one of those boxes. And now we're gonna take the blue and put it on the opposite side of the red. So it should look something like this once you have that done. And now we're going to take the yellow and we're gonna put it right next to the red that we've already done and already created there. Just making sure that it lines up. We're trying to be super neat with our lines. And finally, we're taking the light blue and putting it right next to the dark blue that we already put on our canvas and now it looks like this so when you take a step back this design ends up looking blurry and it's really kind of cool and trippy it's super fun you can also do it in this wavy pattern like i said before there's a tutorial on that but for now it's time for the second project which is tulip origami for this project, you will need some colorful paper, some scissors, potentially some tape. We're gonna kinda wing it here and see what we actually need. But for now, I'm cutting a piece of paper into a square by just folding it into a triangle and cutting it. And now I'm folding it into a triangle the other way as well to create some folds in my paper. Then I'm folding it over hamburger style here and then flipping it around and doing it hamburger style once again. So now we've got this paper with all these folds. Now I'm bringing in the paper like this to create two triangles on either side. I know it's kind of crazy. I'm going to link the tutorial that I used in the website down below so you can follow along with that and with me. But now I'm folding down each side and then I'm flipping it over and folding it over again. So now we've got kind of this diamond shape. So now what I'm doing is I'm tucking this in and folding it again and I'm going to put them together. And this is what I came out with on my first try. And um, let's just say that's not really looking like a tulip. That's not right. So we're going to try again. I've got my husband in here now to help me figure this out. We're going to figure it out together. I finally figured out how to do the same fold I did earlier. And then I'm trying to tuck it up again. So for this time, I'm trying to really follow the steps step by step. I think I was close the first time, but now we're definitely going to get it. I'm not someone who gives up easily. So hopefully you aren't either because this took a couple of tries. But once I had it all folded, I was getting frustrated. As you can see, I threw my husband's. Um, that wasn't very nice of me. Don't where I got it back for him. And then after that, I finally had it folded in the ways that I needed to. You're supposed to tuck in these little flaps into one another to help it stick. I had to cut a hole in mine because you have to blow air in through the hole to get it to puff up. And then it started looking like a tulip. So now I took down these little sides and unfolded the petals and you could really kind of see it. So I was really kind of proud of that. I couldn't do any more. It definitely looked better than my first attempt. And then I decided to just roll up a green piece of paper to create a little stem and here's how it turned out. Like I said, I will link the instructions down below. And now it's time for the third project, which is to redo old art. 
So I've got some old canvases here. These are from my very early art days. They aren't textured at all, so I don't need to sand them down before I put on some gesso. But if your art is textured, I'd suggest sanding it down before you paint over it to create a new smooth surface. This was kind of a bittersweet moment. I created this art very early in my art career, many, many years ago. So it's kind of sad to see them go, but I'm very excited to see them be transformed into something new and to give them some new life so they're not just sitting in the back of a closet somewhere. I really want these to be food themed and I know that's kind of weirdly specific but it's just been in my head and I want to do some fruit pictures. So I decided to do my husband's favorite fruit which is apples and one of my favorite fruits which is oranges. So I'm trying to make two pictures here. I'm using my Posca pens because you know that I love them so much and now I'm going ahead and just putting in all of the colors that I need for the apple first. So I started off with red. I want it to be a red apple and then I added in some different yellows, a dark yellow and then a pastel yellow. And now I'm adding in even more red because I really want it to scream apple. Something I'm trying to do with this project though is really push myself and try out some new things. So I'm adding in some pink and some different fun colors in this art to kind of make it look like a little more unique of a style than I would typically do. I want it to be super fun and pastel and just super cool when you look at it. That's kind of my goal, I guess that's usually my goal but it's definitely one for today so I'm starting off by just adding in all of the colors adding in some green I'm trying to be really bold with my colors here not trying to make it look super realistic but just trying to make it look really stylized I'm even adding in some blue for the shadows to make kind of purple shading in the red and now it's time to work on the background so I decided to do this bright blue background to really contrast the red and the orange and the apple and and now I'm just putting that all over. I decided to take a paintbrush and smooth everything out just to make it a little more smooth and not so rough. I added in a little more red to darken and deepen some areas and then I put the background colors on as well and for this I picked a teal which would also complement the orange and the red and then I decided to add in some pink and orange and yellow at the top to really kind of blend it all out and make it read a little more pastel and fun and it looked super cool. I added a little more yellow yellow to the apple and some highlights and then it was time to do these sides as well because I'm a professional like I say I have to do the sides and now it's time for the next one the other one still needs highlights but I'm going to do it at the same time I highlight this one so now I'm starting out with the orange and for this one I'm starting out with a simple sketch with Posca pens as well to really get the whole thing mapped out Giving old art a makeover is so fun. It's so cool to see how much you've improved and what things you do differently now. Obviously for the first ones, like I said, that was really, really early and probably some of the first art pieces I ever did on canvas. So it's really cool to just see how far I've come since then. And it's really fun also to just try and make new things and push yourself. So if you're gonna do something else and remake an old art project, try something out of the box that you don't normally do, add in some different colors, use some different techniques and just really challenge yourself and have fun with it. And then allow yourself to just have a fun project. Don't take it too seriously because sometimes we can make really cool things if we don't limit ourselves to what we think will work and we try some things that we aren't so sure will work or not. So this was a lot of fun to include a whole bunch of different colors and to also try and use the Posca pens to create an entire whole piece of art. I think it also turned out really cool and I really love using Poscas with a paintbrush to really just kind of use a unique style with it all. It's really fun and I also loved trying to incorporate new colors and pastels in my artwork. This was really fun. I even tried tried to include some pink in this orange drawing, which was very unique and very different, but it actually made it look really cool. So it's just really fun to experiment and try new things. So if you're doing this, go ahead and just try to be wild and let yourself do whatever you want to make your new art. And now it's time for the background, which I wanted to do what I'm telling you guys to do and try to be really bold and unique and creative with it. So I decided to make the background hot pink not some tame pink not some chill light pastel no like we're doing a bold dark hot 
pink background for this. I really wanted to push myself. I'm challenging you guys to do it, so I've got to do it too. So there we go, putting it on. I had no idea of a pink background would look good next to orange, but I think it turned out pretty cool, and if anything, I'm just glad that I tried something new. And then it was time to try and make it match the other one a little bit more, so I did the same type of background at the top that I did as the first one because I want them to go together, and then I painted the sides. Here's the before of them with no highlights and the after of them with the highlights and I think these turned out so cool and they definitely have improved from the beginning. Here is the apple one again just super cool and cute and then here is the orange one. Let me know which one you like better I'm curious to know but let's take a look back at the first project of the day which was to create an optical illusion art. So we made this checkerboard and made them look super blurry using only four colors which is just insane. The next project was to create origami and we made this cute little tulip which had me very challenged but we pushed through to create something amazing and finally here are the canvases that we repainted to make new and improved art and to challenge ourselves to try something new let me know which one of these projects from today was your favorite mine is definitely this one like and subscribe if you haven't already and tag me on instagram to show me your creations at anchored art designs i'll see you guys in the next one bye